Yes, we're back again. Doesn't it make you wonder? You see these conversations being had again on social media. I always say use that as your barometer as to where people are um, mentally, emotionally, and from a, just a simple understanding point of view. You have these men bringing up certain topics and you see the women get in the comments and they try to change the tone and the narrative uh, and, the, and the type of conversation you're having. But I myself, I've got about two, a little over 200 videos. Other guys have 300, 400, 500 videos. Why is there so much content to discuss about the dynamic in today's dating market and the issues with women if the women is everything nice and sugar and spice or sugar and spice and everything nice if women were so great how was how am i able to make so much content how are people in this space able to create content to where they're having five hours eight hours i've seen a stream that was 10 hours long discussing female behavior does that make sense one thing you fellas will learn that you're now in a time where love doesn't exist anymore. If you think your woman loves you without the actions to prove it without a shadow of a doubt, you're lying to yourself. If you think your woman loves you and her daily actions, speech, her words, her presence does not reflect that you are lying to yourself. And we know a lot of you men get into these relationships because it is looked at as social currency. A lot of men that are in certain fields, certain careers and professions, marriage is a, it's kind of like a, uh, what's the word I want to use? Advantage, if you will. It's like an economic economic advantage that a man gets by being married when he's in a certain profession and i've stated I, I spoke about this to one of my guys back in 2015 2016 and i told him i was you know in the insurance industry at the time i traveled catastrophe doing claims etc and i went to another company that was on the same level as the company that i left prior to and they I pretty much had to start from the base, from the ground up. I had to start from the ground up. It was very difficult. And I noticed that it was some racial discrimination. I actually started doing the work. I always say, if you if you see something that is fishy in your career, in your workplace, when it comes to discrimination or whatever the case may be, start documenting. I'll give you a quick story before I get into the spill. So working at an insurance company in a certain department that wasn't anywhere close to my background. And I was having conversations with my manager where I said, well, I have this type of resume. I've traveled. I, I ran sites. I went on a claim uh, on a catastrophe claim uh, project that was about a month long. And I the last day or two, I ran the entire site. So why would I have any difficulty getting back in the claims atmosphere. So I started taking and this is the this is the kicker. We took calls from the department in which I was trying to get into. And, you know, a lot of people say everything is about race. We're not going to just make it about race, but we are going to make it about reality. We will we'll, we will make it about reality. So I started documenting. I documented about three months because, again, we get anywhere from six to eight calls per day from this particular department. And when you take a call, you get the alias of the person you're speaking with and you type that in and you can see their profile just like on Facebook. You can see the picture, the position, and the department in which they're calling from. So I took about three months of notes and I was taking down the alias, which you can identify. And I said, and I went to my manager and I had a long list I said, look, at, I said, I've been taking uh, notes and this was a black woman. I said, I've been taking down notes 
And this doesn't look too good to me. I said, I've been getting calls from this particular area and I have about 180 aliases. And I said, and I did the math. I said, only about 12% of the calls that I've gotten from this department were black. Irrefutable evidence because you have to match up the account number, the time, and, it, and everything is time stamp dated on what you discussed, what you did on the, on the account. I said, you, you mean, I said, is this a coincidence? She had this dazed look in her face like, um, oh, this guy, he's going to be a problem. So why about two to three weeks later, <laughs> I get an interview for a position in claims? Coincidence? No. But again, what you will learn is that love doesn't love you back. And you want to say how well how how does that story play into it plays into the current dialogue because you must know your strengths and weaknesses and where you belong. You must know this. So when you look at the OnlyFans model who stabbed her boyfriend and trying to play crazy, yet she's still posting on social media. You look at Kenan Williams, it if you look at the picture, it doesn't match. They just don't match. So you cannot really believe that these women are truly into you and are there for you. They are there for themselves. They're there for themselves. When you see women walk away from marriage after marriage after marriage, you must understand that women have a hive mindset. So what is, whatever is trending, that's what they will behave in. Divorce is big business and it is also contagious. So women are incentivized to divorce. I mean, you look at how divorce breaks down the state. This is why you have to go through the state to get married. And when you want to leave, you have to go through, go through the state and pay a fine. You have to pay fees. You have to pay lawyer fees, court costs, etc. And these courts in, in the state, they benefit off of your breakdown of marriage and family. No different than the school to prison pipeline. They benefit from your child being a degenerate bastard. We're going to send them up the road and make 30000 a year off them. Free labor. You must understand the dynamics in the environment in which you are in. Yesterday's price is not today's price. Yesterday's norm is not today's norm. You see these women leaving these men by the thousands. It is simply because it is popular. The upgrade is popular. Every chick thinks she's a baddie. And it is you simps who have created this type of environment. I see all these chicks thinking, t talking about they're fine and all of this. Bitch, you are five or you're four or five at best. But because of the man's lust and thirst, and I, and I get it, you have a lot of men who have not, who has not experienced the warmth of a woman on a consistent basis. They have not done the work to improve themselves to get better quality women. So they get desperate. They'll say and do anything to get in the draws. You simps. And I tell people what you do affects someone else. When you create a bastard, you create a problem for someone else to fix. Ladies. When you're just out here fucking willy nilly creating children because you want a baby because you don't get the attention that you used to get. So now you want a child because you're going to live vicariously through that child. And most women want daughters because they want to be they want the daughters to be spitting images of them in their prime. I want a baby. You don't you don't hear women saying I'm ready to have a family and be a helpmate to my man. They say I want another child. I'm ready to have a child. But they're not ready to be a wife. So what you simps and betas do when you gas these women up, you create this delusional mindset. I see women in their 40s 
talking about the right one is going to find me. Me at late, me at late forties talking about finding love again, talking about getting, it's a wrap. It's a wrap, baby. I'm sorry. It's a wrap for you. Love does not live here anymore. She does not want to love you. She wants you to be present. So her friends and family approve of her. The value of a woman is attached to the value of the man that they can uh, retain and get commitment from. So when you see a one, you see these women single five, six years run away. This is not a golden opportunity, a golden ticket. You think because she's single, she has not been out here fucking. Oh, on the contrary, she has, which is why she perpetually is single, because she has lost the ability to pair bond to a man. So she is spinning out of control. But you guys take this as an, uh, oh, I, oh, she been single fine. Yeah, I know this one in the bag. Oh, I got me one. Lame sucker shit. The baddies don't stay on the dating market for too long. The good women, they don't they don't stay around. They don't they don't, they're not just hanging out on the shelf. But women think good men are just hanging around waiting on them to run the whole gauntlet when they're tired and wore out. Okay, you can marry me now. Okay, I'm ready for a relationship. Bitch kick rocks. It's a wrap. Pull up and smoke pussy at best. Pull up and take a shot, pussy at best. Period. No dates. It won't be any dates. It won't be any coming to the family functions after 8 p.m. only at the crib. After 8 only at the crib. She doesn't love you. She needs you because she needs your validation. She needs your presence to help her go up in the ranks amongst her peers and her friends who she secretly hates and who she knows doesn't like her. You see these women, they compete for attention amongst each other. You notice that? I'm going to do a video about a woman who has problematic friends. You have a, if you have a woman and she's constantly telling you about her friends and how she's falling out with them and et cetera, et cetera, Get rid of her because her judgment is piss poor. And you can best believe if she picked you, she picked you for reasons that do not benefit you. You're not a permanent fix. You're not a man who she really wants to be with. Her judgment is terrible, which is why her choices and friends are terrible. If her if she can't pick friends, how can she pick a man? If she can't pick friends who does not bring her drama and she falls out and fights with, how can she pick a viable man? It doesn't make sense. Divorce is always going to be big business to the government because they benefit off of your divorce, the breakdown of your family, child support comes into play. All of these things, it's about money and power. They have the government has power over you because if you don't pay the child support, we're going to get the money one way or the other. We'll throw you in jail. We're going to punish you for not paying me. Women believe that they're owed something when a relate when they come to grips. If you level a woman up and she she feels she's better than you, which she will most likely have that mindset that she's better. She's going to try to upgrade and, and leave you. And, and when that doesn't work, she's going to try to get you back. Or she's going to try to get a consolation prize for leaving you. You're in a new age, fellas. Marriage, marriage is dead if you're looking to marry a woman from the West. This country, this and feminism is globalized, but you do have certain countries and certain caliber of women who you can get. But your woman has to fear you, not fear you from a violent standpoint, but fear you as a fear of losing you because you bring so much value to her life but she does have to fear you from an aggressive standpoint as well to know that you will not tolerate any type of disrespect and now and no i do not advocate putting your hands on a woman if your woman drives you to the point where you have to put hands on her please leave immediately
because she's going to trick you out of your position. But you guys, let me know what you think about this video. Like, comment, subscribe. It's the Date Master.